I am delighted to have my friend. He's a friend that gets me in trouble a lot. My brother Phil, if he gets in the car with us, he looks at us and he'll simply say something like this. When I was a child, I spake as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. <laughs> Something about this guy makes my inner child come back, I guess. Makes my youth be restored. And, uh, but we have a wonderful time, and the Lord has just blessed us with a great friendship. And uh, I, I treat him like a younger brother because I give him no mercy whatsoever because <laughs> he doesn't deserve it. Glenn... You've got a hard task for the next few days. Yes, he says. And, uh, but uh, we are so grateful. And uh, as the, those are going to class, get ready to do that. Would you make welcome to this platform, my friend, and your friend as well, Pastor Derek Pitts, this morning. Good morning, church. It is such a joy for us to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 I mean, I've, whenever I come to Connorsville, I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I'm family, you know. Um, and I mean it, you know, I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Pastor Ron, you know, not only your partnership, but your friendship. I believe that God has sent you in my life for such a time as this to take what we're doing to Belize to a whole nother level. I know it's just not you, but it's all these folks in here that support, that pray. And so on behalf of my family and the Belizean people, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you for your support. Because of what you guys are doing here in Connorsville, there are people in Belize, in the rural parts that are being loved, that are hearing the gospel, and their lives are being changed. The team that came down and served on the medical mission, love on those people. One young lady came in the mobile clinic and said, could you pray for me? I was thinking about committing suicide. She have even attempted drinking poison. And so I want to say thank you. You might not see all that you're doing. Like I always tell people, but when that day come, when we're all caught up yonder, and God begins to show you all these Belizean kids, and you say, I don't know what you're doing, God. Why are you showing me then? I believe he will remind you of the days that you pray. He will remind you of the days that you sow. He will remind you of the days that you encourage Pastor Ron to run with the vision that God has laid on his heart. And so... When I say that I love you guys, I'm not just saying that being other words, but I'm saying that from my heart. I love you guys. This feel like home. I was telling Brother Glenn um, this morning, you know what? I feel like I could live in Connorsville. Amen? Isn't Connorsville a good place to live? But while I was thinking about that, of living in Connersville. I don't know if it's the little angel Stoney or if it's the Holy Spirit that reminded me of what I woke up to on Saturday morning. I want to show you guys a picture of what I woke up to on Saturday morning. I mean, it's right then and there that I realized I love you folks, but I can't stay here. I got to go back home because this is what it looks like in Belize. You know, this is, this is, this is Belize. <laughs> you look at our palm tree. You could see the sky, you know, you, you know, the water, you know. I, I got to go back, guys. I love you guys. I mean that. But I got to go to that. Amen. Would you guys want to go with me? <laughs> so I love you guys, but I got to go. I can't, I can't stay here. I, I, I can't stay here. You know, Justin was trying to get me go shooting deers and I asked him immediately, was it cold? You know, I, I can't, I, I won't go out there, shoot a deer, can't take it back to Belize and I'll freeze my rear off trying to kill a deer. So, no. 
But I, t- I, did tell, I did tell Pastor Ron, if he goes, I'll go. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with him, amen? But it's so good to be in the house of the Lord, amen? It's so, so good. Listen, it is a privilege to get to come to church. I'll repeat that. It's a, it's a privilege. It's an honor. It's a freedom to get to come to church. Because there are so many places in the world that they don't have this freedom. And let me tell you something. This freedom is being attacked by the enemy. This freedom is being, uh, 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 trying to, he's trying to suck this away from us. But I come to tell you that in the Bible, the word of God say, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The church is victorious. The church is not this building. It's awesome that we get to congregate and encourage each other. But the church is us. Amen? And so it's an honor to be in the house of the Lord. The psalmist said like this, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord because in the house of the Lord is everything that you need. Amen? Amen. I believe that the Lord have a word for us this morning. And so if you have your Bible, let's turn to the book of Hosea. And we will read uh, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. If you're there, say amen. And it reads like this. It said, then the Lord said to me, Go and love your wife again, even though she commits adultery with another lover. This will illustrate that the Lord still loved Israel. Even though the people have turned to other gods and love to worship them. So I brought her back for 15 pieces of silver and five bushels of barley and a measure of wine. Then I said to her, you must live in my house for many days and stop your prostitution. During this time, you will not have sexual relation with anyone, not even me. This morning, I want to preach on a topic, unstoppable love. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Lord, Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for life. Father God, we thank you for your spirit because you said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And Father God, I believe, I know it, that your spirit is in this place this morning. And Father God, everything that tried to chain us up, everything that tried to bind us up, everything that tried to set us back, Lord, Father God, I believe where the Spirit of the Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is deliverance, there is everything that we need. So God, help me to deliver your word. Hide me behind your cross that when your people see me that they will see you, O God. Let me move the way you move. Let me operate the way you operate, Lord God. Anoint this broken vessel to bring forth your word. Anoint this broken vessel to bring forth your word. Father God, I pray right now, Lord God, that whatever distraction, whatever plan, whatever scheme, whatever conference that the enemy is having against this body, I rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. I serve him as eviction notice. It's time for him to pack up and leave. Father God, because I believe, Lord God, that this morning there will be some, Lord God, that will be set free. I believe, Lord God, that there will be answers to prayer. I believe, God, that there will be healing in this house, Lord God. I believe, Lord God, that that today you will bring back the prodigals. Today, Lord God, you will restore hope. Today, Lord God, you will restore peace. Today, Lord God, you will restore, Lord God, broken pieces. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you know that the word of God is very powerful? How many of you know that the Word of God is able to take a sinner and turn him or her into a saint. How many of you know that the Word of God is able to translate you from darkness into light? How many of you know that the Word of God could give you an answer in the midst of your chaos when you don't know what is going on, but the Word of God is able to do it? 
But in order for you and I to have the word of God this morning, there were many lives that was lost. You see, this Bible that we hold, this Bible that we read, was considered a chain book that only certain people had access to it. And those that was trying to get it had to pay to get a piece of scripture out of the Bible. It has been through turmoil, it had been through pain in order for us to get it into our hands, not to put on the shelf. But for, for it to become a roadmap for this Christian life. How many of you know that this Christian walk isn't easy? You know, if it's easy, everybody would be doing it. Everybody would be in this church this morning. It's not an easy road. You see, when you begin to serve God, then you become a real target for the enemy. You see, when you're not serving God, you're, 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 you're his friend. But when you have decided that as of this day, I will serve the Lord, you have become on, you have become on the devil's most wanted list. He has assigned demons at you that study your tendency, that know your move, that know your thoughts, that knows your highs, that knows your low, and know exactly what to do when they want to get you. Let me tell you something. The enemy is after us. But I also come to tell you that the word of God tells me that if God be for me, who can be against me? A thousand may fall at my right and ten thousand at my left, but none will come near me. The word of God even told me that even though the, the, the weapons of the enemy may form, they won't prosper. He might even put the bullets in it. He might even pull it back, but it will not shoot me. It will not kill me because the word of God said no evil will come near me. You see, when I became a Christian and I began to read this Bible, I realized that there are many people that read the Bible for many, uh, for many reasons. I know of witch doctors that read the Bible to cast spells. I know of people that put the Bible on their, on their, on their bed head because they believe that it will protect them during the night. I believe there are people that read the Word of God just to get them out of problems. But when I became a Christian, I, I wanted to read the Bible to find out who is this God that I'm serving. Who is this man that sit high but look low? Who is this man that is unseen but has the power to control the earth? You know what? I came to find out that he is the first and the last. The one that give it and the one that take it away. He is the bright and morning star who was, who is, and who will forever be. Come on, somebody. He is everything and he is everywhere. He is unmovable, but he can move things. He is unchangeable, but he can change things. I, I found out that Adam called him Abba Father. I found out that Job called him Redeemer. David called him King. Joshua called him Savior. Abraham called him friend. Come on somebody. John called him the soon coming King. But to me, he is my everything. When I am sick, he is my healer. When I am broke, he is my provider. When I am lost without direction, he is my great navigator. When I am hurt, he is my comforter. Oh, come on somebody. He is my daddy and he is the best father. When I am lonely, the Bible tells me that he is a friend that stick it closer than a brother that will never leave me or forsake me. Come on somebody. Do you know this God that I'm talking about? Do you know this man that I'm talking about? I come to tell you that what is more important to me this morning, Pastor, that I found out that he is love. Mm. He is love. I can be broke, but if I have love, I have everything. I might not have a castle on the hill, but I have love in my little cottage. I, I am a king in my palace. Come on. Love is everything. I, I found out that he loves me. Even in my broken state, even in the, 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 the position that I am, he, he loves me. 
that he says in Romans, he said, Derek, there is nothing that can separate you from the love that I have for you. Not the worries of this day, not what you have been through, not darkness, not the hell. There is nothing that can separate me from your love. You see, you can have everything, but if you don't have love, you don't have anything. But you know, if you haven't really encountered the redeeming love of God, you won't know what I'm talking about this morning. And, and, and you know why I use that word redeeming? Because it's an everyday thing. Come on. Every day I get up, he loves me. He, he, I, I, I slip down, but I get up. He loves me. I make mistakes, but he loves It's a redeeming. It's a process to show me how much he loves me. A wretch am I, but he loves me. A sinner am I, but he loves me. He loves me just the way I am. You might not love me, but he do. He loves me unconditionally, Pastor. This is not a performance. I don't need to perform to get his love. His love is available before I even hit the stage. It's an unconditional love. It's not a trans transaction that I got to do this in order to get that. He said, I love you before you were even conceived in your mother's womb. Even when you were taught, I love you. He still loves me. John 3, 16, for God so loved me. Come on, somebody. I don't know about the world, but he loves me. That he gave his only begotten son. Love. But it is one of the hardest topic to preach in this time and age. The love of God. Because the love of Christ super exceeds everything that we see here on earth today. So what can I compare it to? What metaphor can I use to express how much God loves us? And what is this love that I'm talking about? See, I would love to compare it to marriage. Oh, it's a love that a wife has between a husband and a husband between a wife. But statistics show me that six out of every ten marriage ends in divorce. That's not love. That's not the love of God. I wish I could compare it to when you were falling in love. Come on, somebody. I know there are some newly wed in the house this morning. I've been watching you on Facebook. Not you guys, the guys over here. But I wish, you know, when you got that little note and it had a heart and it had butterflies and whenever you see that girl or you see that boy, how you felt, I wish I could compare it to that little butterfly feeling that you get when you saw Prince Charming coming on that stallion. But how many of you know that it doesn't really last all the time? I wish I can compare it to the love that a mother have for a child. But we see the abortion rate in the country right now. I wish I could compare it to the love that a child has for his parents, but we understand the time that we're living in. Kids are killing their parents. See, for us to understand the love of God, we got to encounter it for ourselves. And for us to experience the love of Christ, we got to go through some stuff. We, we got to go through some challenges and some hardship for us to encounter the love of God. You might be saying, Brother Derek, what do you mean by that? You got to go through some pain, brother. You got to go through some pain, sister. To understand how much God loved you. See, my heart was broken when I was young by my first girlfriend so I could understand that that is not love. That is not what Christ's love looked like. You see, I was abandoned by my father 
so that I could understand what it means for God to love me as a father and me as a son. I had to go through that pain. I had to go through the pain of some friends turning their back on me so for me to understand how much God loved me and how much he would stick closer than a brother to me. I got to go through some stuff in order for me to understand the love of God. What you're going through in your life right now is just God saying, daughter, I want to prove my love to you. That you will understand that your love is not based on your father, not based on your mother, not based on your relationship. you got to first understand that I love you so that you can understand what you're receiving here on earth. I've been through a lot. But this morning I can stand here with confidence and tell you I know that my God loves me. You see in Hosea, the prophet Hosea, God told him, go marry a prostitute. <laughs> God wanted to teach Hosea something. So he told him to go and marry a prostitute. Let me tell you something. I am saved. I love Jesus. But he, I, I don't know about that. You know, this is where you say God won't give you more than you can bear. I wouldn't be able to carry that cross. But God wanted to teach Hosiah how much he loves Israel. He probably told Hosiah, son, you will be hurt. You will probably doubt me, Hosiah. You might want to give up. But I got to teach you what my love, my unstoppable love is. Hosea, go married that prostitute named Gomer. Could you imagine that dialogue? This young man saving himself. Serving the Lord, saying, Lord, I will answer the call. He said, yes, I will follow you. No, how many times? We say, yes, Lord. We don't know what we're saying yes to. Well, that, that was what happened to Hosea. He said, yes, Lord. I will serve you. But he did not know what that looked like. And so God showed up on the scene and said, Hosea, your task is to go and marry a prostitute. Hosea probably said, am I hearing you right, God? Do you meet me, Hosea? Is there another Hosea in Israel? Are you sure it's me? Yes, Hosea, go marry a prostitute. But God, I have been saving myself all my life for a beautiful wife. One that has been saving herself too, not a prostitute. God said, I understand, but you see her, married her. Her God? Yes, sir. Are you sure, God? Yes, sir. This one, God, the prostitute? Are you sure? Yes, married her. See, many times when we read the book of Hosea, we, we, we hear the struggle that Hosea go through. We hear the pain. We hear, oh my gosh, what is, how can, how can Hosea deal with that? When we always on the side of Hosea and trying to understand what was Hosea going through. But have we ever stepped back and questioned what it was like for Gomer, a prostitute? See, I want us to shift our perspective this morning from the prophet Hosea to Gomer. She was a prostitute. That wasn't her dream. When she was in school, the teacher asked her what she wanted to be. She did not shoot her hands up and say, I wanted to be a prostitute. She had dreams, she had ambitions, she had goals. She wanted to be somebody in life, definitely not a prostitute. See, it's easy for us to criticize her of who she is now, but don't understand where she's coming from. Could it be that she did not have the father to show her love? Could it be that her mother abandoned her and gave her up at a young age? Could it be that she fell in love and the person that she fell in love with hurt her and got her to the point that she's searching for love? Do you understand the plight that Gomer was going through? 
You see, there are many that could criticize you of who you are now, but I believe that there are many in here that is only a product of what they've been through. That is not really what God wants for you. You see, Hosea meant deliverance, but Gomer meant complete. So every time they called her name, they were saying complete. Could you imagine that? Her name meant complete, but yet she was not complete. Every time she hear her name, she probably asked God, is this all that you have for me? Is this all that I'm going to be? A prostitute? Somebody that is hurt? Somebody that is void? Somebody that is searching for acceptance? Somebody that is searching for love? Somebody that is searching for their daddy just to say, I'm proud of you, daughter? Somebody that is just searching and saying, somebody love me. See, I, I don't know who is it today. I don't know what you're going through today, but God sent me to tell you that he loves you. And he loves you just the way you are. So Hosea showed up on the scene. She thought to herself, well, here come another client. Let's get to business. I give you service, and you give me money. That's simple as that. I got other people coming. Let's go, Hosea. Hosea say, I'm not here for that. I'm not here to use you. I'm here to marry you. I'm here to love you. Gomer doesn't know what love is. She probably said, is that something to eat? <laughs> is that a menu? Is that a style of food? See, all she knew was sexual activities and not love. All she knew was hurt, pain, but not love. All she knew was rejection, but not love. She didn't know what love is, but yet she said, yes. Yes, Hosea, I'll be your wife. She didn't know what that looked like. You see, we can laugh at Hosea. We could laugh at Gomer and what she was going through, but it takes something inside of you to move from the known to the unknown. Giving up what you know for what you don't know. It takes something inside of you to say yes to what you don't know. There's some of you here that God is asking you to give up the known for the unknown and trust me and watch what I am able to do in your life. All I want from you this morning is a yes and I will do the rest. See, you have been trying to figure this out all on your own. You have been trying to fill that hurt. You have been trying to fix that scar. You have been trying to put that broken piece back together. But God has been showing up time after time again, saying all I want from you is a yes. I'll do the rest. All I want from you is to, for you to surrender and watch me express, watch me manifest myself to you that you will never need to search, that you will never need to question again if I love you. See, the reason we're in the position that we're in is because we don't want to say yes and we don't want to leave the known for the unknown. So we settle for the lies of the enemy that this is the way that life is always going to be. And it becomes a vicious cycle. That seems as though it will never break. You try but it comes right back around. 
You try to make the step, but it comes right back around, and you find yourself in the same position over and over and over again. And all God is saying, daughter, son, just say yes. You see, if we would come from behind the mass and check deep down and answer this question, are you happy where you're at this morning? Do you feel complete? Do you have the peace in your life right now? Gomer said yes. She didn't know what she was saying yes to, but deep down inside of her, there was a void that sex couldn't fill. Deep down inside of you, you know that what you're trying to do to fill that void, it cannot fill it. And I come to tell you that only God can fill that void in your life this morning, the love of God I'm talking about this morning. Gomer said yes. All God wants from us this morning is a yes. So here was Gomer, a wife. Could you imagine? Sweeping the house. Iron clothes. She'd never done this before. Doing the dishes. Could you see her in her apron shouting, Husband, your breakfast is ready just the way you like it. Sunny over easy, whichever way you want it. Bacon, whatever. Honey, pancakes. Could you imagine? I want you, you know, plead this out with me. Go where Hosea would come down, kiss her and say, Thank you, honey. And she was like, feel kind of uneasy, you know. Could you imagine? I want you to play this out with me. Hosea would show her love. She didn't know how to receive it. Like, this is, this is strange. Right? But see, behind the mass of her being a wife, there was a prostitute still living. Her body was in the house, but her mind was in the prostitute house. She was trying to do what was right, but every time she tried, the enemy would bring back up her past. Even though she was redeemed from the prostitute house, she was going through the redeeming process of understanding God's love. See, there are some here this morning that have said yes, that are trying to do the right thing, but every time you make a step forward, the enemy reminds you of who you used to be. You're in the house, but your mind is somewhere else. You're trying to be the best you that you can be, but every time you make a step forward. But I believe that this morning there will be some of you that will look at the enemy square in the eye and say, I am no longer that man. I'm no longer that woman. That was an old creation. I'm a new creation. That was my old address. I'm at a new location. I'm not that person anymore. But Hazai, but Gomer was going through a war. And in the redeeming process, there will be things that the enemy will bring up, your past hurt, your past pain. But if you don't know that you're redeemed, let me tell you, sooner or later, if you don't know that you're love, if you don't know that you're redeemed, sooner or later, you will go back to the things of your past. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. See, she began to merge the wife and the prostitute. There was a merge going on in the house. You know, as I was praying over this message, there were a couple people that God began to show me. And there are some in here that is merging the prostitute and the wife. While Hosea is around, she's the wife. But when he's not around, she's the prostitute. 
There is a merge that is taking place that we're playing on the fence and we're playing with the enemy. Merging with the Christian life, with the things of this world. And the word of God said that she went back to the prostitute house. Because here's the thing. The things that you're playing with will soon conquer you. It's easier to pull somebody out of a boat than to pull somebody in a boat. And I come to tell you, whoever you are this morning, that God loves you. And he loves you just the way you are. You don't need to go back to the person you once was. You don't need to go back to the person that, was, that, that have so much anxiety and fear or, 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 or hurt or scar. God is saying, I love you and I'm able to love you beyond what you're going through. Don't go back. And we find that Gomer went back to the prostitute house. And Hosea came home from a hard day of work. Probably brought her flowers. Probably stopped by Walmart and got her some kisses. He came home. Probably held for his wife. Can I get somebody on the keys? Somebody? Honey, I'm home. He didn't hear anything. He said, she's probably in the bedroom. Knock on the door. Gomer, honey, I'm home. She wasn't there. Probably in the shower. <laughs> oh, she's taking a bath. We're going to watch movie. We're going to watch Netflix and chill tonight. Honey. I brought you a suit of clothes. She was not there. Oh, she, she probably went over to the neighbor, Pastor Ron. Let me go and check my neighbor. Hey, hey Gomer. Hey, Gomer. The neighbor probably looked out and said, no, she's not over here. Hey, Gomer. Hosea began to, to say to herself, herself, nah, I don't think so. She did not go back to the prostitute house, not my wife. I love her too much. Doesn't she know that I love her? That she doesn't need to go back to that place anymore? Can't she see that where she was, she was being taken advantage of? I know that she knows. That that is not the place that she needs to be. Where's my wife? He, he probably sat on her, his front porch and everybody that passed, he asked because he believed in his heart that his wife is not at the prostitute house. And so he waited for people to pass by and he asked them, have you seen my wife in the marketplace? Nobody. Where is my wife? Don't she know how much I care for her? Let me go back. If it takes me, the husband, to go back to the prostitute house, I'm going. He got up. He went to the prostitute house. And there his wife was with a next man. Nobody, that's my wife. You're not going to do that to her. Could you imagine what it took inside Hosea to look at Gomer, his wife, in a prostitute house being taken advantage of by a next man and he still look at her in the eyes and say I love you but not only that 
The man looked at Hosea and said, nobody, you can't take her. You got to pay me my money that I paid her because she did not give me a full service. Ooh. Hosea said, what is the price? What is the price for me to get back my wife? Thirty pieces of silver. Oh, but I don't have all of that. I believe Hosea began to look at people. Hey, can I borrow some money? My, my wife is about to be taken advantage of. And she needs to go back home with me. I'll pay you later. Can you give me some money? And he showed up at the prostitute house and said, here is the money, but give me back my wife. And he take his wife from that prostitute house. And I believe that he, he look at her and begin to clothe her all over again. Begin to fix her here and fix her well and say, honey, don't you know I love you? Don't you know that you're the apple of my eyes? Don't you know that you're my everything? You're going back to my house. And as of this day, you're going to be my wife. There's some of you here this morning that I'm talking to. It might not be all of you, but there is a few that is going back to the enemy house. And, the, and Jesus said, there is nothing, absolutely nothing that will stop me. I'm coming after you. His unstoppable love I'm talking about. He's coming. Even when you don't feel it, he loves you. Even when you don't know it, he loves you. He paid the price. He paid the ultimate price. God said, if you take my son, I'll send him again. But I'm coming after you. If it's just for you, Jesus would have died on the cross because there was a price that he needed to pay to get you back from the enemy camp. And he paid that price. And this morning, he's saying that there is nothing, there is no hell. There is no demon in hell that will keep my daughter bound. There is no demon in hell that will keep my son bound. I'm coming after you. Don't you know I love you? Don't you know you're the head and not the tail? Don't you know that you're above and not beneath? Don't you know that you're my child. Don't you know? Don't you know that you're free? Don't you know that you're blessed going in and blessed coming out? Don't you know? Don't you know that there is no enemy in this world that can stop you? Don't you know that you're destined for greatness? You're not destined to stay in this place. You're love. I got a purpose for you. I got a plan for you. And you're stepping to that. I will not sit by. I will not watch you go back to the place that you once was. I'll... There is nothing, hear me out, there is nothing that you can do to gain the love of God, but yet he gave it all to you. I want you to think about that. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, and I'm saying this because the enemy has lied to us that we got to perform to get the love of God. There is no performance that you can put on to get the love of God. There is no work that you can do. Some of us feel like we got to work our way to get the love of God. And God is saying there is nothing that's a lie from the pits of hell. And I denounce it in the name of Jesus. No longer will you carry that burden of performance that I got to do something to get God love. You can't do nothing to get God love, but it is fully accessible to you. So quit with the performance. Quit trying to work. Oh, I'll, I'll say yes when I get everything in, in order. I'll go all in when I get this right. Here's another truth. You will always be 
imperfect until the perfect one return. Brother Derek, what are you saying? I'm not perfect? No, you're a sinner. We all are. The Bible said that which is imperfect shall become perfect on the day of his return. Until then, we're in the redeeming process. Have you been trying to perform to get God love? Have you been trying to run away from God love? God sent me on an assignment this morning. And brother, there is no devil in hell that will stop me from fulfilling God's assignment. An enemy is speaking to your ears right now. That you don't, you can't experience the love of God. You? Don't you know who you are? You're a prostitute. But I come to tell you that God loved the prostitutes too. God loved the drunkards. God loved the wayward. God loved you just the way you are. Can we bow our heads? Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. A love, Lord God, that is unconditional. A love that doesn't hinges on if we're good. A love that doesn't hinge hinges, Lord God, on, on, on if we're perfect. Father God, but a love. You said you have sent your son into this world not to condemn the world, but to know love. There's some of you here this morning that didn't receive the love of a father. Someone have hurt you in, your pa in the past. And there is a void inside of you that you have been trying to fill. And you have been trying to do everything that you possibly can to fill that void. If I just do this or if I just do that, I'll be able to make it. But you find yourself in the same position over and over and over again. I come to tell you this morning that the love of God is able to set you free. The love of God is able to bring you out. The Bible said that the, the love of God covers, 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 covers or voids. If you're here this morning, I want to pray with you. If you're saying, Brother Derek, I need to encounter this love for myself. I want to pray with you. Or you might be here. And you're in that merging process. Whereby you're merging who you are now with who you used to be. And you're playing. And the enemy is out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is what he offers. But God offers, he said, I have come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Where are you this morning? Don't go back. You have come a long way. You have come a mighty long way. For you to be questioning if I'm really love.
if I'm good enough. Question if I have it, have what it takes for this Christian life. No, you don't have what it takes. But the love of God will cover you. The love of God will empower you. The love of God will equip you. The love of God will show you the way. Don't go back. If we could have those that work at the altar to come up. And for those that you hear the voice of God this morning. That is saying, son, I love you. That is saying, daughter, I love you. We want to stand with you this morning. I know this is a heavy message for some of us. But I just have to be obedient and let you know that he loves you despite what you're going through, despite what you're facing. So if that is you, this one, would you come? I would love to pray for you. Hallelujah. 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 Can we get a next sister or somebody to stand with this sister? God loves you, sis. And he loves you just the way you are. There's some that know where you came from, but they don't know where you're going. Because God has a plan for you. He loves you. There's still more in here. Hallelujah. He is my strength. Yes, Lord. He is my portion. Don't leave this place thinking that you're loved. I want you to leave here knowing that you're loved. That you could walk out of fear and whenever the enemy comes again, you could say, I am love. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we stand all over the house this morning? Nobody looking around, just reverencing as she's ministering in song this morning. I know this morning we're in this room and we've got out of bed this morning, brushed our teeth, combed our hair, put on our clothes, probably ironed them and all those types of things. And on the outward, we look pretty good this morning. But in this room today, there, are, there is invisible scars in our lives we all have what we call our war stories that has marked us and the enemy often comes into those areas of our lives and says oh you've fallen too many times you've made too many mistakes surely surely he can't love you any longer you've, you've disappointed too many times But this morning you've heard that there is an unstoppable love, an unfailing love that comes from Jesus. It's not about how many times you've fallen. It's not how many times you've started and stopped, but it's about today. He's not looking at our yesterdays, but he's looking at us today and he's still saying, I have a love that I'm extending to you. And I'll love you right where you are this morning. Maybe this morning you could stand here and say, you know, I'm saved. I've committed my life to the Lord. But you'd sit here and say today, man, but the enemy's just really been attacking me and telling me mentally and emotionally, I'm not loved. I'm not valuable. I'm not this. I'm not that. All those things. 
this morning you can walk in a place of freedom beyond that today when you just embrace the love of the Father this morning. As they sing this chorus again, this song, if you're here and you've heard the man of God and the message of God this morning, will you let that not just hit your ears, but will you let it penetrate the most inner part of your life? And would you be willing to accept that love today? You don't have to perform for it. You don't have to beg for it. But would you come right now? We'd love to pray with you, pray for you. Oh, you are loved. Won't you come? Won't you come? Some of you sisters, would you gather around and pray this morning with our, our sister here and these young men that are here. Some of you men of God, would you come and join? Let's just have a season of prayer. A season of just the Lord ministering to our hearts. Oh, you are loved. Hey everyone, it's Pastor Jade Abrams here. I want to thank you for watching today. Please feel free to like and subscribe or find us on our other social media platforms. And we pray God's blessings your way. You have a great day. We'll see you next time.